While Boone was taking his catronaut lessons, he tried to trick his instructor, using Spanish, trying to catch him off guard. Of course, the instructor had a prime directive, so he could only teleport a clue. Boone is lazy but resourceful, so he brought the clue to his friends so they could do the decipher work. Polarity is the key to all our technology. Polarity has many forms. Mechanical polarity is the form we like best. We have found no use for this kind of polarity. We have found these polarities useless too. You might have guessed, useless again. As inventors, we are running out of options. Let's borrow Boone's plate to check the mechanical polarity. In the polarity of the roll axis, the gravitational potential energy does not change. In the polarity of the tip axis, energy might only be lost. When spinning, momentum is exchanged between the two polarities. At fringing frequencies, minuscule energy is recovered, as we have seen before when I called it something else. There is one more polarity-like effect. A pair of weights can be balanced, making it stable like a rolling plate. Pivoting about any other point establishes stabilization at minimum energy and maximum energy polarities. We will call the stabilization polarities A and B. Obviously, the tipping plate is a polarity B device, like our impulse power thrusters. Our OU generators are polarity A devices. On a bet, or a dare, or with OPM, we would replicate this toy, boasting we could make it four times more powerful at a quarter of the cost using Spock's advice. The power would come from having the gaps and radically reducing the polarity A inertia. Polarity A would be maintained with the new mechanism by changing from repulsion to attraction polarity. If the power of four fleas was not enough, we could start changing air to steel with any leftover OPM. For now, what is more important is to understand the wobble and the steps in Fausto's toy and the fact that they are synchronized in the proper polarity. Synchronization and subsequent elliptical path only occur at the proper polarity and have peak force at critical speeds. Using attraction rather than repulsion between the stator and rotor, this device would lose its elliptical path and not self-spin. Computer simulation indicates it will not spin with either polarity, confirming the enigmatic perpetual motion is impossible rule, or just lazily ignoring some barely perceivable reactions. Perhaps the ellipse is more noticeable in Murray's invention. No one seemed to notice or ask why our rotor is like an elliptical hula hoop when Murray's was like an elliptical coin. In the valuable slingshot effect, the path is a segment of a decaying ellipse. All synchropetra designs producing desirable effects that can be used instead of oil have a common attribute. I wonder if my grandson's third grade teacher will teach him that elliptical stuff doesn't need to obey the silly perpetual motion is impossible rule. The scope trial comes to mind. How much will the fine be for his teacher saying, Perpetual motion is impossible sometimes, the times being when trying to justify burning oil. With a little time left, we can discuss inventing. Inventing is like buying a lottery ticket. Bagawins will surely argue that Sinkerpetra stole the steps and ellipses from Fausto, so profiteers should not need to pay royalties. Fausto might have stole the steps from Johnson, who could have stolen them from Davenport. While all this nonsense is being sorted, we can continue burning $4 a gallon oil. The Secretary of Energy, Dr. Stephen Chu, has been informed of this technology. Perhaps he knows 
when we are scheduled to start enjoying the prosperity of new technology jobs.